Hey guys, what's up? Gaming Gear here. So, today's video is about building a cheap freaking PC. This is not... Let me just start off with some basics. Everything here is picked... It's only for the fact that it can do stuff on the internet today. Um, it's partially upgradable, but I wouldn't really recommend upgrading it. I would recommend just saving up some cash if you build this PC and just getting a whole new PC. Um, this will definitely be fine for web browsing, you know, opening a few documents. Uh, if you upgrade some things as, as we go, you'll definitely be all set. But this will, this computer, with especially with, we're using Ubuntu, so some reasons I chose that is, A, it's not as heavy on the parts as Windows 7 is. Sorry, my chair was squeaking. So basically what that means is 2 gigs of RAM is kind of the minimum you need for Windows 7, but you know, it's fine for, um, basically it's like having 4 gigs in, in Ubuntu as opposed to like, 2 is like 4 in Ubuntu as opposed to it's 2 and 7, because 7's so massively, um, what do I call it? intensive on the, uh, on the hardware. So to start this build off, of course we're going to be using a CPU motherboard combo, because they're cheap. We're going to be using an ASRock PV530A. Uh, this comes with the VIA PV530 processor. So, you know, it's not AMD or Intel. I I didn't really know that other people made processors for um, desktop platforms besides them. So the VIA processor is built on the 90 nanometer manufacturing process. Pretty freaking old, but you know, it's a dual core at 1.8 gigahertz, so it should be fine. Um, it should compete neck and neck and go above and beyond the uh, E250, which is a 1. I think 2 gigahertz. Let me check here. Do, 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 do. No, it doesn't list the. If you know what an E250 is, I think it's like it's below 1.5 and it's a single core. Um, the graphics on this, the onboard graphics, support DirectX 9, so you know some old gaming. Um, one quick note: the memory is a little weird. Is two slots for up to four gigs of DDR2 memory, and then it has a single slot for DDR3, which both of those speeds go up to 800, so not exactly fast. Um, the RAM I've chosen is 1333 megahertz. Spoiler. Um, so it'll throttle down, but you know, if you build a new PC in the future and you want to reuse that RAM, it'll still have that speed. It just throttles from the processor's um, ability to use that much RAM. So also, if you have some DDR2 RAM. Feel free to reuse that. Uh, it has LAN, it has USB 2, PS2 ports, all that good stuff. It's micro ATX too. And it's from AS Rock. So, AS Rock is awesome, which I kind of became a fanboy of them ever since I did that build with their motherboard. So, moving on, we have a AMD Entertainment Edition RAM. It's actually made by Patriot, but it's labeled as AMD RAM. It is 2 gigabytes. It doesn't have a heatsink, but you know. It's fine. Uh, their heat sinks aren't very good anyway. They're just like red over it. Uh, it runs at 1.5 volts, which is, you know, not like old 1.65, so it'll run hot. Um, and, you know, it's, it's good RAM. It's made by Patriot, so you still have their warranty. So, for the case slash power supply, we're going to be using a Cooler Master TC102 mid tower with a 500 watt power supply. Uh, this part's from Micro Center, it's the only part that's from there. I mean, it's a 500 watt power supply from Cooler Master, so you should be good to go on that end. The case is fine; it's good looking. Side note: the 500 watt power supply does not have a um, 8 pin or 6 pin PCI E power thingy. So, if you want to add a graphics card that needs that in the future, which it does have a 2.0 lane for PCI, if you want to add a graphics card, even though I don't see why you would, because um, the processor is going to be a bottleneck. This doesn't have that, but it'll do fine for powering all of your stuff. So, good stuff. For the hard drive, we're going to be using a Western Digital Caviar Blue. Uh, I really wanted to get a 7200 RPM hard drive, so I did. It has 16 megs of cache, uh, which is great. It uses SATA 6 gigabit a second, but the bottleneck is going to be it's 3 gigabit a second, which shouldn't limit it too much because it's not like an SSD. Also, this is 320 gigabytes, which is not giving up a whole lot. It's still plenty of space. Especially for a low end user. Okay, and finally for a DVD burner, we have a Samsung DVD burner. It's $17. I have one of these in my system just because it's OEM and comes in 
plastic. It shifts fine. It works fine. Uh, it has Samsung's own um, Super Write Master technology, which prevents the discs from getting scratched when you're reading and writing on them, which is awesome. And then the operating system, as mentioned before, is Ubuntu 12.04. If you want to use Windows, go right ahead. It's going to stutter a little bit. Also, one side note, the RAM, there's 4 gig stick of G-Skill memory for 20 bucks on Newegg. So if you have the money and spend the extra 8 bucks, you will get lots more RAM, which is good, good, good stuff. So the total for this is only $192.95. That's pretty cheap, considering you're getting a full-blown computer. So, instead of getting the Nexus 7 for your entertainment device, get this. It's going to be awesome, decently fast, and able to surf the web and do all that good stuff in its entirety. So, this is going to wrap it up for this video today. Please remember to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And also, I'm going to be taking, um, in the future, uh, people's messages for PC builds they want to see. So, at a certain price point with a certain idea, just, um, private message me on YouTube, and I will see what I can do. So, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.